Good morning, church. Welcome to Easter Sunday. He is risen. Amen. Let's stand up and worship. Let's get into this today. Celebration. I was buried beneath my shame. Jesus, I've learned to not cry. Y'all understand that? 
Man, he's good. Amen. Amen. Good morning, y'all, and welcome to Easter Sunday. My name is Rachel Brown, and we are so glad that you are here today. Thank you, Apollos. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> y'all don't know. Thank you, Jesus. Um, so happy Easter to you. Happy Resurrection Sunday. Or maybe it's happy Easter Day. I heard that this week from somebody. I said, okay, that's new, but thank you, ma'am. Um, and I have a question for y'all. Who cooking? Who cooking? Okay, so I got some hands raised, okay? But I need to know, like, who got the collard greens, who got the mac and cheese, who got the ham? Because the Brown family, we might be pulling up, okay? All right, now, that was might have been more than one question. But either way, you can bring me a plate next week. Uh, you know, just freeze it, because I don't know if it's still going to be good my next week. But just freeze it and, you know, just come back next week at 10 a.m. Because we are here every Sunday at 10 a.m. Amen? Amen? Amen. And we are all about connection here at Oasis Church. So if this is your first time here, please fill out a blue card. It's on the seat back pocket in front of you. Or we have a QR code if you fancy like that. You know, just scan it and fill out the card. Let us know how you got here. Maybe you saw the sign when you went by. Maybe somebody gave you a card. And like I said, if it's your first time here, go to the coffee because they're going to hook you up. A little coffee station, okay? You get your little free drink. Okay, don't leave right now, though. Just get it at the end, though. All right? So if your first time here, let us know. Fill out a card. We would love to hear from you. If you have a prayer request, fill out a card. We would love to hear from you. There are three ways to give here at Oasis. Y'all should know this by now, okay? It's in person, just like Apollos. He brought his little $5 today. We were like, fill out your name, put your $5 on the time card, and you put it. <laughs> yeah, he's not here for it. Y'all hear him say boo. He's not here for it. But we're, we're training him now, you know? So you put it in the offering box in the lobby, or you can give online. That's us, because let me tell y'all, that money got to leave the account before I see it, because then I'll be like, uh, should I give, should I not give? No, just give it, just give away, just before I even see it, okay? Amen? Somebody else got the direct deposit like me, I already know. Somebody else clap. Thank you, thank you. Don't leave me up with myself. <laughs> or you can mail in a check. If you are mailing in a check, let us know that you are watching online. Let us know that you know how long you've been watching. We would love to hear from you. But before we continue in musical worship, let's pray. Man, Lord, what a glorious, glorious day it is. Father, I thank you for sending your son, Jesus Christ, down to die on a cross for my sins. And Father, not just dying for our sins, Lord, but defeating death and rising above in resurrection. God, I thank you that we don't have to experience the sting of death because of your son. Father, I always think about our son, Apollos. If I was in your shoes, I don't know if I can give him up for the sake of the world. But God, I thank you that you did. I thank you that you saw fit enough to send your son for us, to experience you, to have a relationship with you. And God, I don't take it for granted. Lord, these tears are real. It hits me every single time to think of what my life was before you, to see how you've transformed my life to today. God, I thank you. Lord, I know that you are speaking to someone, that you are plugging or you are pulling on their heart, Lord. You are giving them courage, Lord, to even show up today. And God, I thank you for that. Lord, I ask that you just continue to pursue them. Speak to them in a way that they know it's you. Lord, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. Death had claimed its victory. The king of love had given up his life. The darkest day in history. There on the cross they laid the sinners. For every curse his blood atoned. Not the end we could have done. 
For the earth began to shake And the land was torn What sacrifice was made As the heavens
Jesus. 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 How sweet your name. Father, I'm just honored to know you. Honored to serve you, Lord. Just honored to breathe today because you've placed breath in my lungs. Father, I just ask right now, in the name of Jesus, I ask, Father, that I would decrease and that you would increase your presence, Lord. Lord, you know, you know my heart. I don't want to do any of this without you. And I know that's the heart of this church. We want you, Jesus. Father, I just pray right now for those in the room who maybe have wondered, why are so many people proclaiming your name? I pray right now in the name of Jesus that you would give them eyes to see, that you would give them ears to hear how amazing your love is. Father, I know what it's like to go 21 years of my life without you. I can't go another day without you, Jesus. So, Father, anything that I've placed before you, I just repent of that right now in the name of Jesus. And I thank you for your forgiveness. Lord, have your way today. Have your way. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen, amen, amen. Well, before you take a seat, um, let's see what we should do today. Um, Ask your neighbor, the, Apollos, what you think? No, that not pineapple. <laughs> Spoken like a true six-year-old. Before you take a seat, your favorite candy. Ask someone what their favorite candy is, and then you guys can grab a seat. All right, let's see. Jackson, favorite candy? Reese's, yes. How many Reese's lovers in the house? Yep, yep, right here, right here. Yep, yep. All right, let's see, let's see. Josiah, what's your favorite? Anything sour. Anything sour. How many? Raise your hand. Sour, sour. Okay, okay. Who likes Skittles? Ooh, okay. Uh, what about, clearly, we don't need to give him any more. Um, <laughs> that's my son, um, everyone. Um, yeah, so, hey, welcome. Uh, my name is EJ. If this is your first time, we like to have fun here. It's a family. Uh, sometimes, you know, you go to church and it feels like the pastor's distant and, you know, it just feels kind of disconnected, but we want to create a family here at Oasis Church. Amen? Amen. And so we're just glad that you're joining us. Uh, just honored to be standing before you. Uh, shout out to my wife who killed the announcements earlier. Yes, yes. Um, yeah, I, and, and to be honest, like, she doesn't cry. So she was very genuine. Uh, she really doesn't. So her dad was a Marine drill sergeant, and uh, she was brought up wiring houses because he was an electrician. So she's, she's pretty tough, and she's from St. Louis. So, um, yeah. But we're going to dismiss the kids. Uh, each week we want the kids to join us because... Uh, we want to show them what it means to worship, you know. Uh, we're always discipling and showing people, uh, specifically our children. You know, some of you guys in here are UW fans because your father and your mother were UW fans, right? 
Um, and so I'm a Lakers fan because my dad was a Lakers fan. So we're always uh, discipling people into something, and we just desire to disciple our children into the things of God. Amen? So kids, you can be dismissed. You can stand up. Go to your Bible study groups. He'll be up here on the stage one day, clearly. Where are you going, sir? Lost your shoe doing all that dancing. Um, but yes, so like I said earlier, my name's EJ. We've been in a series called Behind the Lens, The Character of Jesus. Uh, my wife kicked us off uh, talking about Jesus being sovereign. Uh, my brother Matthew, Pastor Matthew, came last week from Texas, and he talked about the humility of Jesus. This week, I'm going to center on the grace of Jesus. Everyone say grace. grace. That's good news, family. See, when we think about the word grace, oftentimes we don't understand that grace is actually Jesus personified. Grace is actually Jesus personified. If you remember, for those who were here, I did a series not too long ago called The Gospel. And if you remember, I talked about what was God's plan for the gospel. I took us through Genesis 3, Genesis 22, Exodus, and I showed us the thread of the coming Messiah, which is Jesus. And I explained to us that grace is unmerited and undeserved favor. There's nothing that I can do to earn it or can't do to not receive it. Amen? Amen. And so today, I thought it was fitting to go through the life of Peter to see where Jesus met him in the midst of his denial, in the midst of his calling. Because the thing is, is we'll see later as we kick off a new series after Easter in the book of Acts, we'll see how Jesus restored Peter. And maybe you're here today and you need some restoration. I know I do, right? Maybe you're here today and you need Jesus. Whether you believe him or not, I want you to know that he's pursuing you. And it's not spooky. You see, here's the thing that I found, because I didn't grow up in church, but what I found is, is that people don't really have a problem with Jesus. You could ask religions that. You can ask, I've spoken to atheists. I've, I've spoken in front of them. And each one of them will agree, I have no problem with Jesus. But I have problems with the people who name the name of Jesus as Lord. And so my heart today is to introduce you to this Jesus that you hear many Christians talking about, but not necessarily living like. Amen? So, Father, I thank you for today. I thank you, Father, for every single person that is here. I thank you, Lord, that you see us, that you know us, that you brought us into this house today to experience you. And so, Father, I just pray for every heart, every mind. I pray, Father, that as we look at Peter's life, that we'll be overwhelmed by what Jesus has done for each one of us. We love you. In Jesus' name, everyone said Amen. Well, let us start where Peter meets Jesus. Many people may be familiar. If you're not familiar with who Peter is, he is a disciple of Jesus. And so in Matthew 4, 18, verses 20 through 20, it says, As he was walking along the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who was called Peter, and his brother Andrew. They were casting a net into the sea, for they were fishermen. Follow me, he told them and I will make you fish for people. Immediately, they left their nets and followed him. Here's the thing, is that when, when you were 13 in Jewish culture, you would either go to rabbinic school or you would take on a trade with your family. And so rabbis would always want to choose the highest of the high, the ones that always scored hundreds on the test. So for Jesus, to enter the room and say, look, I want you, someone who is not qualified to go to rabbinic school and, and walk with me as a rabbi, I want you because everyone has, has maybe overlooked you, right? And so Jesus says, I'm calling you to follow me. Let's just say, if any of my hoopers here, Peter wasn't the first pick, okay? He was that last person that you're like, ah, I guess I'll take him. But that's the reality is that Jesus extended grace by picking Peter 
and his brother and saying, look, y'all may be rough, but I want you to follow me because I have a plan for you. Amen? The next scene, we see Peter being called out by Jesus. In Matthew 14, 28 through 31, Jesus has now got done feeding the 5,000. He's just done an amazing miracle, and he sends the disciples across the lake. He says, I'll meet you on the other side. Maybe you guys may be familiar with Jesus walking on water. This is the context of this narrative. And so Jesus is walking on water. The storms hit. The disciples are terrified. And they realize that there's something that doesn't, shouldn't be there walking on water. And so in Matthew 14, 28 through 31, it says, Lord, if it's you, Peter answered him, command me to come to you on the water. He said, come. And climbing out of the boat, Peter started walking on the water and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the strength of the wind, he was afraid. Everyone say he was afraid. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus did what? Reached out his hand, caught hold of him, and said to him, you of little faith, why did you doubt me? See, oftentimes when we read this story, we look at and say, you of little faith. And we think like, oh, Jesus is just kind of like taking shots at them. Man, y'all ain't got no faith. You ain't doing nothing. You ain't really about this life, okay? But what he's actually saying, it, the little faith is a Greek word, oligapistas. And what that means is it's talking about underdeveloped faith. It wasn't that he had no faith. It was that his faith had not gotten to a place of maturity to trust in the one that just fed the 5,000. So it's not that there was faith lacking. And maybe that's your story today. You have faith, but maybe life has just beat you up. And you focus on the winds and the waves, and you've begun to doubt. God, I don't understand why I lost my mother. God, I don't understand why I lost my father, my brother, my son. I don't know if you are who you say you are but I'm going to keep walking. I want you to know if you're here today and that's your story, Jesus is extending a hand. Amen. Amen. Amen? We then find ourselves, as Matt talked about last week, Jesus was aware that the disciples would betray him, they would fall away, and he still washed their feet. And we find ourselves in the scene in Matthew 26, 31 through 35, it says, Then Jesus said to them, You will all fall away because of me this night. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised up, I will go before you to Galilee. Peter answered him, Though they fall all away, all fall away because of you, I will never fall away. Jesus said to him, truly, I tell you, this very night, before the rooster crows, you would deny me three times. Peter said to him, even if I must die with you, I will not deny you. And all the disciples said the same. Jesus knows what's about to happen. But he still had the conversation, right? Maybe you're here today, and at some point in your life, you had this faith in Jesus. You had this hunger for God. But then life circumstances hit. You said, Jesus, I'll never leave you. You used to tell people about Jesus all the time. You used to read your Bible. Maybe you're here today and you thought you would go into ministry one day. There's hope for you because Jesus is grace personified. Amen? Amen. We then find ourselves in Luke 22 
where it says, Then they seized him and led him away, bringing him into the high priest's house. And Peter was following at a distance. And when they had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and sat down together, Peter sat down among them. Then a servant girl, seeing him as he sat in the light and looking closely at him, said, This man also was with him. But he denied it. Didn't Peter just say, I'm going to die with you? You don't want him as a friend, okay? Because if you get getting jumped, that's not the guy that you want running with you, okay? Hey, I wasn't always saved. But um, in verse 55, or verse 57, but he denied it, saying, woman, I do not know him. And a little later, someone else saw him and said, you also are one of them. But Peter said, man, if I was in Memphis, I'd say, man, I am not. And after an interval of about an hour, still another insisted, saying, Certainly this man also was with him, for he too is a Galilean. But Peter said, Man, I do not know what you are talking about. And immediately, while he was still speaking, the rooster crowed. And the Lord turned and looked at Peter. And Peter remembered the saying of the Lord, how he said to him, before the rooster, rooster crows today, you would deny me, everyone say it, three times. And he went out and wept bitterly. We may be all looking at Peter saying, bro, you walked with this Jesus that we're supposed to believe in, that we can't necessarily see, and yet you're still doubting him. You just looked him in his eyes and said, hey, I am going to walk with you no matter what. But yet you still denied him. And maybe that's you today. That you've been through a lot. Maybe you've been on the outside looking in. I hear my family talk about this Jesus. I hear I grew up in church but I've fallen away because there are things to me that make more sense than to die on the behalf of the one that died for me. There's good news, family. I said there's good news. In John 21, 15 through 17, Jesus, after he was resurrected, when they had eaten breakfast, Jesus asked Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said to him. You know that I love you. Feed my lambs, he told him. A second time, he asked him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Yes, Lord, he said to him. You know that I love you. Shepherd my sheep. He told him, he asked him the, how many times? Three. The third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was grieved that he asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Feed my sheep, Jesus said. See, what's interesting is that you notice that Peter denied Jesus how many times? But then Jesus asked Peter the question, do you love me how many times? See, what's so amazing is that that number three is, uh, it's, it's, an, it's to basically make an intentional statement of yes to a completeness. It's to let you know that I really believe what I'm saying. You see, Peter's three times where he denies was not a casual, it wasn't casual. It was a complete disowning with Jesus, with his mouth. That's what he was doing when he said, when he denied him three times. But the good news is, is that Jesus' three times questioning was his way of complete and total healing and restoration. Amen? 
And so I'm about to close. But what I want you to know today is that Jesus is here to restore everything that you feel like is broken. It doesn't matter if you grew up in church, you've left and done your thing, or maybe you've never believed. It, that right there is not the point of this message or of Jesus' heart for you. It's that he's calling you home. He's saying you can be restored today because he got up on the third day, on the third day. And that was intentional. And you can experience that hope, that peace, and that joy today. You see, it's my belief that every single one of us were made to worship. The question is, what are we worshiping? Every one of us were made to love our creator. The question is, are we worshiping the creator, the created things more than the creator? See, we all long for love. But the Bible says that God is love. And so if that's what we were made to do, we should not think it's strange that we think that a relationship can fulfill that for us. And when that relationship hurts us, we feel like we've lost love. We should not think it's strange when we get this big promotion or the job we've always dreamed of, and then we get fired. Or the job is not as fulfilling as we thought it would be. It's because there is nothing or no one that could ever fulfill what our heart was created to do, and that was to worship Jesus. Amen? You see, Jesus is grace personified. And in 2 Corinthians 5, 21, it says, For God made Christ, for God made Christ who never sinned to become sin, so that in him we could now become the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. That word righteous means to simply be in right standing with God. Because until Jesus came, we were broken in fellowship. But because Jesus died on the cross and rose again, the Bible says the same spirit that raised Jesus Christ from the dead is alive in us that call him Father. Amen? Amen. And maybe you're here today and you may be asking, I've heard the sermons, I've heard you talk about Jesus. How can I know this Jesus? Ephesians 2 8 through 9 says, for you are saved by grace through faith. See, what I've realized is that we all have faith in something. You guys had faith that when you sat down, those chairs were going to hold you up. The majority of us, when we started our car, we, we had faith it was going to start. Some of you, maybe not. But the truth of the matter is, we all have faith in some capacity. But what would we put our faith in? One thing that I will leave you with today is that you need to know that out of all the religions, all the beliefs, if this Jesus was a fictional character, something that's been made up, we wouldn't have thousands and thousands of years of people being able to go back from an archeological standpoint, from a religious standpoint, from a historical standpoint, and prove that this Jesus existed. And today, know that Jesus sees you, he desires you, and he has amazing plans for you. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. All right, if you guys could please stand. We're about to go into a time of baptisms. So if you are already signed up to get baptized, you can go ahead and exit the door. 
Uh, one of our elders, Pat, will be there as lo- with Jody, and they'll get you changed and ready. Um, maybe you're here today and you've made Jesus Lord of your life and you've never been baptized. We want to extend that opportunity to you today to be baptized. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to have a fresh start. This is an opportunity for you to name Jesus as Lord of your life. And so we want to invite you into that space. We have changes of clothes, so you don't have to wear those clothes, okay? We have clothes in the back. Maybe you've never made Jesus the Lord of your life. I'm not for, hey, everyone raise your hand and do that. What I'm inviting you to is to come to speak to me. Come speak to my wife, Pastor Ben over here. Like, we want to have a real conversation with you because we believe that this relationship with Jesus is something to be had for everybody. Because it's good news. Amen? Amen. If you simply need prayer, me and my wife will be over here. Uh, we have some elders' wives and elders that will be available to pray for you. So if there's anything that you need prayer for, maybe you're going through a financial situation, you're going through uh, one of your, your mom, your dad is going through cancer, or maybe you're going through cancer, we want to pray on your behalf. Because the good news is what Jesus does is he restores and reconciles. That's what he does because he is grace personified. So, Father, I thank you for every single person here today. I thank you, Father, uh, for those that are joining us online, in person. And I just ask right now in the name of Jesus that, Lord, if you are moving on anyone's heart and they feel this tugging, to surrender their lives to you today. I just ask right now that you would give them a nudge, that you would give them boldness to step forth and walk into everything that you have for them. Father, I just pray right now in the name of Jesus that whoever in here maybe has family members that are going through sickness or anything, I just pray right now, Father, that you would restore and heal. And I just thank you for that. I just thank you for an opportunity another day to be here, Lord. And we give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' name, everyone said, amen. Amen. Jesus, oh, help this city.
Amen. Like I said, if you're here today and uh, you want to be baptized, we have clothes for you. You can do that today. You don't have to wait, okay? Well, we want to welcome those who have already signed up to be baptized. I got my boy Tanner in the building. Everyone clap it up for Tanner. Yes, yes, yes. Tanner, what's up, my man? What, getting baptized, getting baptized I guess. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Tanner, why you want to be baptized today? Um, because I um, <clears throat> want to commit my life to Christ, I guess, and baptism washes your old stuff away and <laughs> um, well Tanner I have a couple questions for you do you believe that Jesus is the son of God do you believe he died on the cross for your sins and rose again on the third day with that confession I'm now going to baptize you in the name of the father son in the Holy Spirit. All right, let's clap it up for Tanner. Jacob, come on. This is Tanner's brother. You ready? Step in. I got you. Just put it in there, you know? <laughs> you gotta sit on your bottom. Let's sit on you. Sit down. There you go. All right. So, why would you like to be baptized today? I love this guy named Jesus, and you know, I want to be renewed, awesome. reborn awesome. in Jesus. Come on. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? <laughs> he said, You bet I do. Do you believe He died on the cross for your sins? 
and you believe that he rose again on the third day. With that confession, I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. We got Megan. What's up, girl? <laughs> cool. good? No, it's not. It's not cold. It's not cold. But if it was, <laughs> all right, you sit on your bottom. Yeah, you're good. It's okay. I'm short too. Um, <laughs> when Tegas get out here, he's gonna be my same height. But um, all right, Megan. Uh, I remember you coming up to me a couple weeks ago, and you was like, "I want to be baptized." And so, uh, I know this is nerve-wracking for you, so you don't have to say too much. But you did tell me when I went to come get smoothies, you had a plan and you had... So I'm going to let you just speak for a second, okay? Um, I've had a long journey. Um, always been religious, just never, I feel like, followed God. So I just want to choose to follow God and live up to His love. Amen, amen, amen. Well, I ask you a couple questions. Do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? You believe he died on the cross for your sins. And you believe that he rose again on the third day. Uh, she said 100%. Come on. Well, with that confession, I'm going to baptize you in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Big Tigas. I told you, he's he going to be as tall as me sitting down. <laughs> yeah, he might, but it's okay. <laughs> Everyone does, always. Go ahead and sit down on your bottom. All right, let's see. Let's see if you got me. Okay, I'm not that short. All right. <laughs> I don't know if you're going to fit in here. You said, hey, can you sit Indian? I know you're kind of big, dude. Yeah, there you go. All right. <laughs> All right, cool. Um, Tigas, we met um, probably a month ago, right? And uh, we just had coffee like two weeks ago, a week ago or something like that. And um, man, I just appreciate your vulnerability in your heart, bro. Like, you're real, man. And I appreciate that. And um, I'm just honored to know you, dog. I know this means a lot to you. This was not an easy decision, but I really believe, man, the plans that God has for you yeah. is so beyond what anyone has ever spoke over you, right? Know that you have a father in heaven that sees you, that's been in pursuit of you for a long time. He formed you and he knew you. And so my brother, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? Do you believe he died on the cross for your sins? And do you believe that he rose again on the third day so that you could experience life and life more abundantly in him? All right. I'm so honored to baptize you now in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Man, 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 great day, great day. Clap it up again for all that God has done. Um, like I said earlier, uh, we're kicking off a new series next week. We wanna invite you back. We're going through the book of Acts. See, after Jesus resurrected, he empowered the disciples with the Holy Spirit to live like he did on earth. And so we're gonna be diving in me and Pastor Ben are going to walk through uh, the book of Acts and just be encouraged by how the Holy Spirit moves in the body of believers in establishing the church. 
Amen. And so we welcome you back. Thank you for joining us this Easter Sunday. We hope that you have a great time. Talk to you soon. Peace. Thank you.